Welcome back to the exciting adventures of Beefstick the Barbarian. Last time, we took care of some business in the Twin Elms. Uh, went back to the Twin Elms, told um, the Anamanfath, uh, easy for me to say, about the hunters and what happened, told them the truth, the full truth hard to swallow truth and uh, they thanked me that's done I also did a bunch of shopping in fact that whole uh, that episode was like a half a shopping episode I'm sure that's boring to watch sorry about that but I take my time Indeed. I can't help it I play like I play anyways um so the plan is now I'm gonna head back to Defiance Bay To warn the uh, Valian Embassy about the conspiracy. After that, the plan is to go back to my stronghold, do a few levels of uh, the Paths of Abnua, and then we'll do um, Eder's um, thing where he wants to go to the ruins, Cleon, Rapa, whatever they're called. Um, we have the map here. Cleoban Relag. Um, I might do that before I go to the Paths of Abnua. I don't know. But for, first things first, back to Defiance Bay. To first fires. Security reports that clan, glass, and specters will attack the stronghold in four days. Well then, we should build some more uh, fortifications. But I can't. I could do the south curtain wall. It's four days, right? No, two days, 24 hours left. Wow. Alright, let's rebuild the main keep. That won't get finished by then either, but oh well. Right, let's head to the Valian Embassy, which is, of course, the exact polar opposite of the screen that I start on, naturally. Looks like the fighting has subsided and the city's back to more or less order, although Looks like there are a lot less people on the streets. Probably, they probably have instituted martial law or something. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, what do we have here? Assassins! Well, let's just go ahead and kill the spellcaster. I got some shiny new armor and weapons. Let's put them to good use. Alright, Grieving Mother's already in melee, so... Go there. Get Palagina to help her out. Use that beef stick. That. And there. Endurance, lay down some radiance. Where's Alof? Where is he? He's way up here. Alof, what the hell are you doing at the fern? Alright, well, you got your mace in hand already, so, alright. Screw it. You're, do you're gonna do yourself some mail. Actually, let's slam him with the book first. Alright. Your thoughts must flow deep. There we go. Knocked him away. Now I can go back to Missile. And start with the Grimoire. Okay. 
Look at these guys just chilling while the battle's going on. Eh, no big deal. Pfft, we're just chilling here. You guys do your thing. Ah, oh, man. Durin's doing work with the bow. 30 pierce damage. Nice. Helps the... It's a mage, so not very well armored. Alright, uh, there. Go after the mage. In fact, knock his ass down. I'll have Alof handle business. This guy's almost dead anyway. In fact, I'll have Palachina help him out. Beefstick and Grieving Mother can take care of this. Bam! So much for the spellcasters. Man, those are some weak ass assassins. I freaking handed those chumps their asses. Yeah? Listen, uh, Leaden Key, y you gotta start mm. hiring better assassins. Yes. Or training better assassins if they're part of your, uh, little cabal there, because... Come on, man, that's that was pathetic. I mean, I had freaking Alof in melee, and he was chopping up your... Well, not chopping, he's got a mace, smashing up your chunks. Written on the scrap of parchment is a concise but detailed description of you. Including your name, your distinguishing features, and everyone you've known to have associated with in your brief time in Durwood. Alright, well. Indeed. Man, those dudes were chumps. Yeah, those grimoires aren't gonna give me nothing. Some chump ass spells. Not the same as before. Your thoughts must flow deep. Oh, deep. there's more. And same as before. Take that. Any more chumps for me to deal with? Come on. I got more where that came from. I'm surprised this resting bonus is still accurate, and that I haven't gone into uh, tired mode yet, but alright. Good enough. Uh, cutscene? Palagina! Wait! There's a tremble in the ambassador's voice as he slowly and barely ri raises his hand to pause Palachina's advance. There are men here. Men who... Oh, they've already been accosted. That's enough, an ambassador. Oh, the leaden key. <laughs> no problem. I just hope I can save the ambassador before they kill him, because I'm going to wipe the floor with these chumps. It's enough, ambassador. We are capable of speaking for ourselves. The slight elf standing to the ambassador's side smirks and toys with a stiletto, lightly jabbing his captive in the rib for emphasis. His bright green eyes turn upwards to lock with Palagina's angry stare. Your superior here. He told me that he didn't want you investigating. He scratches his head with a stiletto, a look of mock confusion on his face. Given his version of events, it doesn't sound like you're very good at following orders. I like this answer. We'll have to assume your orders, like those of your idiot comrades at Stormwall Gorge, are also to kill us. If you haven't figured it out yet, that's not going to happen. Always quick with a smart remark, aren't you? I don't really find you that funny, to be honest. The elf holds the stiletto near the ambassador's neck. What do you think, ambassador? My vows are to ensure the safety of the Republics. Sometimes that means breaking orders, not following them. Palagina's eyes narrow and her jaw clench clenches. Safety? 
the elf chuckles softly. I don't think the Valiant Dukes are going to be too pleased that your insubordination left them with an embassy full of dead diplomats. Your first error was mistaking my countrymen for helpless sheep. Freros! Ceres! Children of the Republics! Show these dogs the price of threatening our people! Palagina's eyes flash, the iris is seeming to grow impossibly large. Palagina's head spins to address the Valian held at sword point around the room, her voice echoing with energy. Oh yeah! It's on! It's on like Donkey Kong! Um, too far away to fireball, I think? Alright, I gotta... Most importantly, I gotta try to save Vincent. V Vincent. Too far away with my gunners to get him. Maybe my, um... Archers could hit him. Let's get a volley in on him. That's it for that, dude. Man, these dudes are chumps. Alright, now it's on. What's this? Deprive the unworthy. Beneficial effects suspended. Alright, whatever. You know what? I think you guys needed some some nighty night, some sleep. Y you look tired, guys. You look tired. What's the area of effect on this? 3.4 meters. All right. Well, let's go here. I think I could get these three. Maybe I'm hoping to get all four of these guys. I don't know that if I can get all of them. Radiance and some mind blades. Man, these are some chump ass agents. Right. <laughs> Nighty night suckers. Oh man, that spell is awesome. These guys got no chance. They're sleeping on the job. A bunch of suckers. And there, go over here and help these guys out. And what do we got? Palagina? Go and uh, stabby stab on this guy's back up, stabby stab on him. And let me get some bouncing uh, missiles. And some mind blades, and that should pretty much wipe them out. Huh? Oh, there was another guy. Was he hidden? Eh, no matter. Oh, let me get these three. Attacking the new agent. Beefstick's got this under control. Let's just get one big ass blow. Plus, he's gonna have a uh, bloody slaughter contributing. This is gonna be a massacre. Ambassador, are you all right? The ambassador shakes his head and looks around at the aftermath of the battle. Am I alive? Yes. I'm not all right, Palagina. When you plant a, cr a crop of intrigue, this is the harvest you reap. Diverus, 
You should be thanking me, Mare La Penita. Do you think that if we ignore this, that it would go away on its own? Palachina looks incredulous at the ambassador's words. I do not. These people are more dangerous than I believed, I admit. But that does not release you from your responsibilities. Palachina's feathers instantly ruffle in protest. I will pray that Hylia gives you swift travels. Please don't. You do what you can. I will do the same. For now, that means prayer. The ambassador shrugs and throws up his hands. Good fortune to both of you. Ado Vidorio. Ado Vidorio. Oh, chump ass leaden key. Looks like I did lose one ambassador, I think. But, oh well. Yes. The leaden key sure took a hell of a lot more losses than I did. That's for sure. Why can't I? There we go. Fine plate armor. Some more money. Ah, uh, was the guy playing with the stiletto? How'd that work out for you, guy? Your thoughts must flow deeply, indeed. Oh, there are dead bodies in here. Any dead bodies in here? How about stuff for me to loot now that nobody's here to see me doing it? <clears throat> Slowly now. I can do that. I don't have enough lockpicks. Six. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. That I could definitely open. <clears throat> I gained some reputation with the Fiance Bay. Cool. Later, Bubba. All right. I think I'm pretty much done in Defiance Bay. Um, stop by Copper Lane on the way out. Got to walk past her anyway, and just uh, go into the Expedition Hall and say hi to the my friends at the dozens. See if they want to, you know, pat me on the back for saving some of their brethren's asses. Get any more assassins? Hmm? Eh? I mean, you know, that's cool if you guys want to keep smashing your head against the brick wall. Indeed. Welcome to do it. I'll keep killing more assassins. Assassins? Yeah, sure. I've been thinking about it. 
And I don't think I'm going to um, put Kana or Horadius or Sigani back into my party and do their personal quests. I think I'm just going to stick with what I got. I like this party. Plus, that'll give me something to do. Their personal quests will be something to do for a future playthrough. Scars cover Weenan's arms and he sports a purpling eye. But the grin on his face is nothing short of triumphant. Finally, we all see what those Animancers and their lackeys in the Crucible Keep are really up to. It's only a matter of time. What was your part in the riots? Uniting the city against the knights, of course. They made their intentions clear when their pet Animancer assassinated the Duke. He shakes his head. A lot of blood in the streets. Shame to lose so many good men and women, but we had to act. Uh, you didn't. Weenan casually nods in your nods your way. His eyes continue to float from mercenary to mercenary. What else do you need? Nothing. Nothing. I don't think she has anything for sale that I want, but since I'm here... For he, I shall listen for. This map marks areas of geological activity in the Durwood and Air Glenfath. Of note is a description of a cavern where molten rock flows within a deep chasm. Hmm. Alright, I'll take those. Alright, I think I'm going to do Adair's, um, Adair's personal quest before I go back to my stronghold. Let's just knock that out. And then we'll go back to my stronghold and, uh, take care of that. Yeah, let's go to Durford. We'll rest in Durford and then head to the roads from there.
I'm surprised my uh, characters aren't fatigued yet. I haven't rested in several days, but regardless, I'm going to go ahead and rest here. Welcome. Two days remaining. This won't finish in time. Just resolve this attack. I am gonna save it in beforehand. I'm willing to take whatever casualties I suffer, other than my ogre. In the off chance that my awesome ogre dies in this battle, I will reload. I know, I know, that breaks my meta non metagaming um, rule, but damn it, that ogre is awesome. I'm not losing him. I highly doubt I'm going to lose them anyway, but yeah. Hey, how'd that play out? I lost two hirelings. Not Korograk, though. Psh, works for me. Did any of my, uh, did anything get damaged? Yep. A curtain wall. Alright. I can live with that. That's fine. Let's uh, hire some new hirelings. Ooh, a mercenary captain. Yes. Any other more expensive hirelings that are like super duper awesome? Uh, let's get an archer. All right. Good times are plenty. And there, here we are. This is the place. My big brother's last battle. I wish I could tell you what we're looking for. Adair scans the lush landscape before you in all direction. He presses his lips together. Anything from that battle, I guess. Whatever 15 years of rain hasn't buried. You see my brother's ghost, you give me a holler, all right? Will do, Adair. Keep it in eye. Let's go on the sneaky sneaky motor. Is the clan Pathans still here? Doesn't look like it. Which is a okay Not with me. Not much here. Ah, there's stuff over there, right there. There's stuff over there. Let's walk in that direction. Hey, something metal in the ground. Over by that boat. What boat? Those face painters can't guard that place forever. These ruins are claimed, friend. On your way. No need to get riled, boys. We're just passing by. Look at his talisman, Pag. Aothasian. Uh, how about that? A godless sack of shit. <laughs> 
Are these two? We got a blazing corpse worshiper on our. Are these two looters actually gonna attack me? Seriously, you two are gonna attack the six of us. By all means, please, hurl your insults. Go ahead, attack. Actually, they never found the body. And their fumes. He opens his mouth to say something, then closes it. He quickly replaces his frown with a polite smile. The only reason for the legacy is because the Duke doesn't got the guts to see you all slaughtered. The gods want you dead. Me and Pag, though, we've done our part during the purges, didn't we, Pag? Oh, did ya? Seamstresses? Make your cracks now. Got no god or homeland to avenge you. By Magrin, this'll be short work. Do you always swear by your god when you do a devil's work? Doesn't matter who it was for anyway. Country's better for the purges. Maybe we start a new purge right here. He readies his weapon. Oh, you two are making a terrible, terrible mistake. But don't worry. This is going to be very, very quick. See what's going on, but don't need to. Because see you later, sucker. Hey, they were right. Huh? That was short work. Yeah, sure was out there. Tell me. Seriously, two freaking looters attacked the party of six. Okay, they had some pretty good armor, but and weapons, but. For real, man. Indeed. Reed Siren's standard piece. This steel ornament once rested atop a Reed Siren standard during the Saints' War. It is shaped to resemble a rising sun. The tip of some metal objects protrudes from a mound of watery river silt. With both hands, you and Edir begin digging in the mud until the object is dislodged. You close your hand around it and pull it from the wet earth. The object is a steel, semicircular frame about the size of your fist. At even points around the semicircle, jagged points jut out like tongues of flame, the rays of a rising sun. At the sun's center is a carved silhouette of of a vorless plant. I've seen these before. They topped the standards of Ray Atzeris. Or did when Wideman was alive. Well, it's something. Just not sure what it gets me. He takes it from you and looks it over, flipping it over and over in his hand. Yeah, let's show it to Green Mother. Do you think you can help us? Look, I appreciate you taking the initiative, but I don't think there's much chance that this nice stranger lady happens to be a cipher. <laughs> well, she actually is a cipher, so yeah. The grieving mother looks at you. I will do what I can, but I will need the skill of a watcher to aid my own, to identify the soul once I have found its traces. She turns to Eder, her hand outstretched. Eder hands her the steel sun. The motion is mechanical, unconscious. The grieving mother takes the sun in one hand and yours in the other, and you can feel her presence in your mind. Her thoughts bidding you to relax. Focus, she says, and the word reverberates as if through an endless chasm. You close your eyes and concentrate. The sun is bright in your mind's eye, warm with the pulse of collective experience and noisy with the thoughts of the past, of battle, of faith, of home. You drift from voice to voice, thought to thought, and there is soul a vibrant signature with which to locate his brother. 
One voice stands out amidst the din, brassy and earnest, a shade brighter than others, but unmistakably of the same construction. You have no image of its owner, but his journey is imprinted within the points and curves of the steel sun, and in your mind it opens before you as a path stretching both southward to Gilded Vale and northward over the uneven terrain that joins the Durwood to Rinsonus. You trace the path back to its origin, far back as you can find, gliding over plains and hillsides to a one-room home in Gilded Vale with a thatched roof and a dirt floor. The path is faint here. Its distance is time rendering images blurry and detail scarce. From Gilded Vale follows a road toward M Madhammer Bridge, reaching the gates of Defiance Bay before diverting abruptly, cutting northward in a beeline for Ritzeris. The path leads to a Ritzeran city, regal and austere in the Eder imperial style. It winds through its streets and climbs a grand set of stairs into a stately building, passing through pointed archways into what appears to be a throne room. Upon the throne sits a man whose head is pure, blinding light, and as, a gaze, and as its gaze turns to you, the light drowns out all else. Its voice carries the force of thunder, but its words are impossible to make out in the imprint. Echoes of echoes. The voice and light fade, and the path bends backward, carrying you along a bar to a barracks, and then, then back southward, marching into Durwood and skirmishing along the way. Upon one battlefield, the imprint is vivid, and you see a Ritzeran standard topped with a steel sun, clutched in the hands of a fallen soldier. You see a young man in Ritzeran armor with other straw-colored hair race toward the standard and lift it. The path you've been following clear to see beneath his feet, and as his hand brushes the steel tip, you can hear his thoughts racing in a blur, and they are of his god and his country, and a brother he hopes is far away from this place. In an instant, the thoughts are gone as well as the man, and the standard is passed to another soldier. You pick the path up again, and it meanders south and disintegrates in the shadows of Cleoban Rulag. You open your eyes. Anything? Looks like you were working real hard there. Your brother got as far as Defiance Bay before turning to Ritzeris instead. He met Wadewin there. Then he enlisted. What'd he talk about with Wadewin? Wadewin's head was a beam of light. I figured that. Wadewin and me had heard enough stories from his uprising to know it wasn't just some tall tale. Doesn't mean he was Aethys. It could have been some wizard's trick. It's what they talked about that's important. What'd they say? I, I don't know. That's not funny. Come on. That metal sun, my brother touched it. You saw where he went. Now what'd he talk about with Widewin? Why'd my brother fight for Raid Saris? I wish I had something better to tell you. <sighs> I guess that's it. Ether's mouth hangs open and his eyes glaze. His forehead creases between his eyebrows. He rakes his teeth over his lower lip. His voice is barely a whisper. Yes, that's it. We'll find some other way to know why he did what he did. I don't think we will. What will we do? Look for more war relics? We were lucky to find this one. The soldiers that fought with him are long dead. The battle was a massacre. Whatever Aethys knows, he's not talking to anyone. A new look has come over Ether, lifeless and dull as ash. We don't have to wait around anymore. I guess I... I got what I needed. If only there were words to fill such emptiness. Better yet, to remove his doubt, his questions. I regret that my answers have only deepened his pain. that over? Hmm. Well, it looks like that's the end of it. I mean, that quest is marked as finished.
man, I am super duper close to going up a level. I mean, we could go back into the ruins. And it say that the... It said that the, um... The vision was going into the ruins, so let's, let's just take a peek in there. I'm right here. I might as well. No need to go into sneaky sneaky mode because ain't nothing left alive in here. Never could Pikos accord with their chiefs. Can a people find order when sunset brings darkness but never a map in the stars of the sky? Never the spirit and always the flesh are a people of lowered eyes. These are the stairs down that will eventually lead me to here, right? back up the other side. Should explore the rest of the level before I do that. Leaving their bodies to offer their souls and forsaking the weakness of flesh and enfeebling of bone, the barbarian goddess succumbed at last.
Nothing here, as I expected, but... Figured I'd do my due diligence. Take five minutes of time to make sure while I'm here. Sorry, uh, there doesn't look like you'd be getting closure, but who knows? Stranger things have happened. Got this machine. The central one has been shut down. Shortcut out of here. Savages massed at the gates with their arrows and swords and spears. Yearning for conquest and plunder, their chieftains and warriors feared not. Vengeance of gods, nor the wrath of their enemies. Death would not punish them. Alright, out of there. We're look we looked. Let's get out of here. Well, let's, let's leave this way in case there's something along this path. I don't think the Glanfathans are here anymore, so... I looked at this right, yeah. something else here in that tent. should look at it before I leave. Other than that though, it looks like I've seen everything there is in this area. Camping supplies, which I don't even need. off here and uh, we'll head back to my stronghold and tackle levels 8 and deeper of the paths of Ad Nua next time.